Hello, this is Lee Thurburn again, and in this video, we're going to talk about a little bit more advanced topic. This relates to how to classify the members in your directory. So the thing we're going to do is go over here to the members section, come down to the lower half and click on edit member classes. Now this is my directory, and there are three sections for classes. There's what we call categories, then there's types, and then there's sources. You can think of these though as class 1, class 2, and class 3. Don't let the names, categories, types, and sources get you confused. Now, when you start off your site, there will not be any uh, specific category entries that have been made, but you're going to be able to customize your categories, types, and sources with whatever definitions that you want to put into the system. But before we actually do this, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the strategy of how you go about setting up your categories, types, and sources. And to do that, I'm going to switch on to a page where I've got a grid. This grid is a three-dimensional depiction of your community. Now, in the simplest form of community, you might have clients and prospects. In the simplest way of looking at the world, everybody is either a client or a prospect. Then you might have, say, two types of clients. You might have men and women. Now, your men clients might be tall or short. Now, if you're going to fill in classes, which these column headings are for clients and prospects, that might be class one. And then your rows could be men and women. That would be class two. So this could be your categories and this could be your types. Or it really doesn't matter. This could be your categories. This could be class one and this could be class two. My point is, is that you set up a grid with two or more columns and two or more rows. Now, within these boxes here, think of this as the third class, class three. Could be sources. You might have a variety of things that you want to have in here. Tall and short might be all you really want. So in the simplest, you would fill each of these with tall or short. And then you could have a woman who is tall or you could have a woman who is short. And this would be a woman client who's tall or short, or a prospect who's a woman that's tall or short. You could have a man who is a client who is tall. You could have a man who is a prospect who is short. So my point is, is that you think about your community relative to your business in terms of how you need to segment or classify your community. What makes sense for your business? Now, if we wanted to use clients and prospects, men and women, and then tall and short, we would go back to our community classification, our member classification tool, and I would come in here and I might have tall as a category, and then I would want to have short as a category. So now I've got short and tall added to my category list. Then I might have men and I might have women added to my category list. Then I might come down here or to my types list. And then down here under sources I could have client and then I could have prospect. So forgetting about all of the others that I have here, I have short and tall as my categories, I have men and women as my types, and I have client and prospect as my sources. Again, don't let the names confuse you. It makes no difference which is which. So once I've set those classifications up, I can now go into my community tool, which I can either just click right here on the left hand side and go to my community, or I could go back to the dashboard and click on the my community button. 
Now I can pull up a person. We'll pull up this Lee Thurburn person. And we're going to classify this Lee Thurburn person as tall. He's going to be a man. And he's going to be a client. So now I've set him as tall, men, client. Now I'm going to go back to my members and go back to my community. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to look for another Lee Thurburn. And I'm going to go to this East Dallas Netweavers. All right, so East Dallas Netweavers, we're going to classify them as short woman prospect. I'm going to save those changes. Now, after the changes are saved, I'm going to go back to my community. And now I'm going to pull all of the tall men clients out and do a search and here I've got Lee Thurburn DFW Netweavers tall men client if I want to pull out all of my short women prospects I now have all of my short women prospects the classifications that you set up and then how you assign them to the members of your community will dictate how you are able to communicate quickly and easily to the members of your community. You are not limited, let's go back over to the grid, you are not limited to a two by two grid. You can actually have additional classifications. For example, you could have dogs. So you now have men, women, dogs, cats. You have tall, short, thick, thin and then you have clients then you might have um, uh, former clients and you might have prospects and you might have uh, vendors so now you could have a client who's tall you could have a former client who's tall you could have a vendor who's now let's copy these over so that you see. So you could have a vendor that's thick or a prospect that's thin. You could have a cat that's thick or a dog that's a vendor that's thin or a cat that's a former client who's short. So you can have any kind of combination and then when you go back and you set those up and you properly uh, set them up and assign them to your individual members then you can um, quickly and pull those members out that you want to target with a message and send a message to them so if I click back over here and I now go back into my edit member classes let's say I've misspelled a class like here I've got pink and I want to miss I want to spell that as purple so I click here and I just say okay I'm gonna go with purple so I just, re I just respell or reassign the name for this group. If I want to come over here to tall and delete it, I just click delete and it makes, it makes me answer a question. If I permanently delete this, then it will remove that field from any entries that it's been assigned to. So if I delete short, it'll remove it from any entries that I've assigned it to. If I delete pink, it's removed any entries that I've signed it to. What does that mean? Well, if I now go over to my communities, you're going to see that Lee Thurburn previously was assigned as um, tall or short. I can't remember which, but now that assignment's gone. So I'm going to go ahead and assign him back as an individual, sign him back as a client, and then sign him back as a shareholder, because of course I'm all of those things. And um, I've reset those. But my point is, is you can edit your classes on the fly but if you delete a class that has somebody assigned to it that person will have a blank spot in their assignment so it will no longer you'll have to go back and reassign a classification to that person this has been a, um, a video introduction on how to use edit member classes and the classes classification tool to uh, communicate with and set up um, uh, appropriate classes for your business. Thanks for watching.